He's talking about being active. Activity can also take the form of recitation. How many of you know the best way to learn is to teach somebody else? Boy, if you've got family members or roommates, teach them geography, psychology, anatomy. They often love it. One of my dearest students two years ago, I, God, I loved her. I finally met her parents. He says, I've heard so much about you. I hear every lecture you've given. She would come home, sit around the dinner table, and recapitulate what I'd talked about. It's powerful because it reinforces your learning, plus it tells you if you really understood it. Because if mom or dad says, well, I don't quite get that, and you go, uh, I don't need understand it either, <laughs> then very quickly you have to go back and redo it. Teaching another person. Now, some of you may not have anybody at home to teach, or they are not interested. Too bad. Teach an empty chair. There's nothing wrong with talking out loud. Thinking is internal talking to a large degree. There's also non-talking thinking. Talking out loud, as long as you know you're doing it, is not abnormal. If you think it's somebody else, or it's a real person in an empty chair, talk with me. I'll, I'll try to get you lined up with someone who can help. If you have roommates or friends say, I'm just doing this little Socratic thing where I'm going to explain it to an empty chair. Dialogue with that empty chair. Practice it. Now, for some of you, writing it out in your own words is a good thing. I'm lazy. I never like to do a lot of writing. But I learned very quickly to look at it, look away, and do a little dialogue with myself. Because it told me if I really understood it or not, very quickly. I would also do it with my kids, teach them as best I could, my spouse, anybody who would listen. It's a nice way of learning. Active recitation. By the way, one piece of research said 80% of your study time is best spent reciting and only 20% reading. Okay?